Good evening, friends. We're inside tonight. Um, the weather is so rainy here. I'm not sure when I'll get back out again. Uh, I really enjoyed the last time. Hopefully you did too. We're going to paint a still life tonight. I'll swing you around and show you a lot of different elements. This uh, coffee pot I have never painted and that's really what got me excited about painting this the most. Um, I wanted to add some color to it too. So as you can see, I put the apple and a few cherries. So we've got the white plate and the white mug hopefully balancing each other and then a touch of color. Um, but again, I'm looking most forward to that coffee pot. Tea kettle, tea kettle. Then move you back around. We're doing it on an eight by 10. And we're gonna do something um, a little bit different tonight. I usually use my view catcher, as you know, if you watch me. And I bought this a long time ago. This is by EZL. And I haven't really used it much. It obviously has the values on the top, but it's uh, set up with a grid, as you can see. And that's approximately pretty good for 8 by 10, 11 by 14, 16 by 20. And it comes with this little marker, which is kind of like a dry erase marker. I actually, um, if I had went outside, if the weather had cooperated, I was going to take it outside. Next time we do plein air, I think I'm going to take it outside. Instead of moving, you know, looking up and down and up and down, and I may try to hold this study. It's tricky though, and do my sketch. But like say I had a house back here, you can really get that correct angle of that roof and it, it, see, it wipes off. So um, I need to make use of it more. Um, if you do paint buildings, you know what I mean. If you paint from life, a lot of times it can be tricky. Say you've got the front of the building and the side of the building going away from you. It can be, I mean, you have to measure and you can do that with your paintbrush. But sometimes it kind of fools the eye as to the depth of that building. It's usually smaller than you think it is. So we're going to hold this out in front of my still life. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Give me a second. I'm going to put a grid on this canvas first. So we have a nine square grid like I do there on that thing. So, uh, all right. And this is, I'm not measuring. This is approximately to my eye looks about right, you know. You know, and obviously that's not even straight, but it's going to be close enough, you know. You could take a pencil and do it really precisely. And if it mattered a lot, I would. You know. So, you know, we'll get us a kind of a grid on here and then we'll look but we're going to sketch it onto my little tool first, and then we'll come over and try to transfer it onto here. Last time I used it, I felt that it did uh, speed things up. So here it is. All right. I'm going to look through it and try to... The advantage of this should be that I don't have to look from here to there, from here to there. And, and every time I do that, I have to be careful like with my viewfinder even looking through that little window every time you look back and forth you know it's you've got to get in the same place so I'm gonna look through here and again it probably will be tricky we'll try to sketch it on it is tricky I can tell you now it's moving around on me But hopefully, you know, it will help with placement some. You know, it doesn't have to be exact at all, so. Like I'm doing that mug and I keep moving it back. I could have moved you around, let you watch my struggle here. 
Yeah, it's just another tool to try, right? So I'm looking through it, and that is approximately, let me, wait a minute, let me get that. I don't really have that snout on the, okay, let me look again. There's my handle. Okay, I can see that lid needs to come up a little bit. It is tricky. It is tricky, I can tell you now. So that's approximately what I got. I mean, I'm holding it right there, trying to hold it really steady. I'm sure there are ways you could come up with, <laughs> if you were very creative, you could probably rig it up in some kind of a holder to where it didn't move at all, I guess. So let's bring this over here now and try to kind of, you know, transfer this over to here. So. You know, and before we do anything, we'll look at it and see if things seem right. So this is ultramarine blue and transparent red oxide. I'm putting it where I marked it, but that doesn't mean I got it right, you know? We don't it doesn't matter but something that I mean like even if you only used it for one element you know maybe the coffee mug maybe if you have a lot of issues with ellipses you know maybe you would find it helpful even for something like that I don't know but I did not as you can see I did not take my time and do this this was really quick so let's look at this now and try to refine this sketch a little bit. Ooh, this is moving around on us. I don't replace this tape very often. You know, I just thought it might be fun to get some different elements going here, you know, the pot and the white mug. And I've stepped up now from where I was, so I'll have to be aware of that as I, as I go to painting. Okay, now I'm looking at that. Let's look at it through my view catcher. This is a view catcher. We slide it to an eight by 10. If you can see it there. And I'm looking through it. Okay, for my taste, and it's my fault, this is too small. This whole setup is too small. I like filling the canvas a lot more than this. It's completely my fault, of course. I did it, so. But I'm gonna wipe it off. And I'm gonna start over, and this time we're gonna use our view catcher. And I'm gonna hold it out and make marks where things are, you know. The handle's very high now. The teapot's pretty low. The edge of the mug is almost 
Now, you know, and this is tricky looking through this thing too, you know, because every time I look up and down, you know, it moves. Well, this is painting from life, you know, versus taking a photo of it where nothing moves. And maybe you don't like painting from life. I do. Okay, I got the edge of that plate. The height of it's pretty low. So I'm making it a lot bigger. I've said it before, but I uh, sometimes I find that's a mistake. Newbies, new people new to paint and make, they'll if they do a still life. I don't know why, but they'll they'll paint them small in the middle. Um, I like filling it up. I like running things off. Um, yeah, it's been so rainy here today, just almost all day long, and they're predicting rain for like the next. <laughs> 10 days or something. I don't know. We'll see. But I'd like to get back out, you know. We're heading toward fall, you can tell. And uh, I'll be going on a painting trip with my one group in October, and we're going to Aurora, Indiana, which I've been there before, but um, I, I liked it a lot. It's a river town. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So it's just relationships. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this handle and looking where this thicker black part starts in relation to the knob on the top. You know, it's all... And negative space can help you a lot. Like to look at this shape inside here as you sketch. It's funny, I bought this pot years ago, and uh, I bought it for a prop at the time, but I, uh, I don't think I've ever painted it. We actually use it, because it's a nice, nice teapot. And doing some straight edges here, help myself. Some cherries. I got a spoon here, but uh, we'll decide about that if we like that. Across here, our mug comes in about here. I just felt it was too small originally, so I wouldn't have been happy with it. I've said that before, but try not to settle. We may just run a handle off. There's a cherry here. All right, let's look for our darks where we see them. Been pretty busy lately. I just finished two pet commissions. And I got the approval on that big landscape that I did. 
I'm working on pieces for It's a Ways Off, but we'll be doing a show next March on service, people that offer a service, and uh, already starting to work on some of those paintings. I think I mentioned that to you. I'm doing one of my nephew who's a fireman, and uh, trying to keep it very loose. I don't want it to necessarily be him. I wanted it to feel like it could be any fireman. Teapots, um, you know, a lot of grays, so we'll be making some grays. Putting the shadows in where I see them. All right, let's mix up some grays. I think we'll start with that teapot. Yeah, I'm gonna wipe this off. See the difference, all this negative space we would have had. And again, it's my fault. I should have just went in on it closer. But this thing's tricky. I haven't, I'll tell you, I think where it might be useful is maybe not for the whole scene even, though we may try that outside next time. But again, maybe for the angle of a roof, or if we had an unusual angle that you need to, you know, you can take your brush and do that, but you might hold this up and then check it to your painting. So I do think it's a very useful tool. I just haven't made much use of it yet. All right, so. I'm throwing some white into this dark mixture. I'm just going to make some grays. I can see the reflection. I'm, I'm looking there to see what I can see. I'm looking, I can see the reflection of the apple in there and the tablecloth, which is much lighter. and the mug even. It's mostly um, kind of cooler reflections. So I'm going to try to, you know, at least get me three values to get me going, like I usually do. I've seen people do very reflective things and paint their little Oh, a little face in there even. You've probably seen that too. We'll not be doing that. Okay. So even though I did throw in some darks, we'll uh, start with this dark mixture I, I made and we'll reestablish where I see darks. I actually follow um, Chong Wong. Don't know if you know who that is. I followed him for years, and he painted uh, recently. He painted a pot very much like this, and it got me thinking. So I give him credit for inspiring me to paint mine. Just again like a puzzle. Again, I'm just looking around. Some of these feel a little warmer, some feel a little cooler. I'm gonna warm that up 
a little bit. It's lighter on top. And I've got a real bright reflection in there. Of course, we'll have to we'll have to get. Sit over here and see on my mug, which you know it might feel too light in the end. It kind of goes in an angle like that, right up against the edge of that. And the bottom is light too, but it's a little warmer. Like I said, it's a reflection of the tablecloth. Putting a little yellow in that. But it's not, you know, I don't want to get too, too light. It's not as light as the actual tablecloth, so. So hopefully we haven't chosen something that's, uh, you know, too complicated. I'm seeing the reflection of the apple right there. also see the reflection of the knob. Even if you don't want to do a, a whole setup like this, if you just set up one challenging item and go for it, I think that's great. You know, just put the teapot out to paint or here on the top. One light's uh, really bright across the top. I don't know what that's about. Comes in from there, goes across there. And every now and then to help our paint move.
Doesn't this look fun? Just uh, here we got one really bright highlight running up the the spout here. It's got a weird shape to it. I don't know in the long run whether that will make sense. It's got like a flat piece here and it goes down and then curves around. Strange. For now, you know, I paint what I see and if it doesn't work then I'll have to think about that. Now, you know, before we put the highlights in, we could come in here with a soft brush and uh, soften things up. Got a great big brush out here. I don't know if I want to use that or not. I don't want to dirty that. We'll just use one of our bristle brushes. sure that I'll want that I'll be happy I did this. We'll just see. I just thought we'd do a little blending, which is not something I always do. Uh, it's scratching into it. See, it's not working. It's just too rough of a brush. It isn't like I don't have lots of brushes. So many brushes. I have watched artists paint that um, they put down a stroke and they soften, they put down a stroke and I saw some artists that I like, I've seen them paint that way. So. at all it is it is reflection so I'm just trying this if it doesn't work it doesn't matter yeah, I always be open to trying new things you know There's a lot going on to this teapot. And then it gets darker again under here. This gets very light. palette knife for some of this too. 
taking a little yellow and white to warm it up a little bit. Let me see. Trying to determine what I'm seeing there exactly. and a really warm highlight in that area. Establishing some of those darks. You know, and oops, I don't want that yellow in there. See, that's some of that apple reflection. And will we like that in the end? I don't know. I think so. All right, let's move on. Let's go away from there and move on to something else here. I think we'll, in no particular order, I think we'll um, work on the mug and the saucer next. Because I think I want the foundation for the apple and the cherries in. I feel like I'd be getting ahead of myself maybe to do the apple. Should maybe matter, but... Um, so what are they? They're white, right? So we'll put some white out there. And again, I'm going to want like three values to work from. And the, I have highlights when you're doing white, you know, I've got highlights on the mug. So nothing can be as light as that. That's pure white. So keep that in mind. Nothing can be that light. So let's make three values. And again, even the lightest one cannot be pure white. Or your highlight will not show. So what I'm doing is just trying to gray down the white, and I, uh, I'm just mixing in some of these other piles into it, just to get something, just to get three values. Because it's about value. 
All right, let's start with the mug. We'll put in the darkest parts of it I see. And I'm not saying this is sketched right at all, you know, but we'll try to paint it correctly. I think the teapot's kind of fun. It's very dark. It is dark. And it overlaps the tea kettle. Okay, let's, let's look at this ellipse. The bottom, the top of it hits about right there. And it actually probably comes down to about there. You know, think of it going round like that. And again, we're going to run this handle off. tell you an artist that I, I think is interesting is Carol Marine. If you don't know who she is, you might look her up. She does a lot of uh, coffee mugs and uh, bowls, and but she is very good about not overworking them. She's very good about laying down strokes and leaving them alone. And her style may be too painterly for you for that reason, but... Uh, This is the lightest mixture that I've made, but it uh, still hopefully not too light for my highlights to show. Looks pretty light, we'll see. We can always go back. But yeah, anyway, look her up. She does a lot of I think she uses a uh, little flat brush, so everything is kind of blocks of flat strokes. Um, but it's a good lesson in, you know, not overworking your paint. I got some pure white on here. I'm going to see if I've gone too light. Wanna, no, I haven't. Part of what helps your highlights stand out too is if you go a little heavier like I've gone. So we'll move on. We'll, we'll think about him. It's not bad. like the shape of the bottom could be more rounded but not too bad okay let's move on we'll try to lay in this saucer underneath um, the elements that are there um, first let's take some darker paint and let's first block in this spoon I 
I saw, I, I'm on Instagram too, and um, gosh, I can't tell you their name, but they had a painting of a spoon, this person. It was a beautiful spoon. <laughs> it's all about how you paint it, you know. All right, we're looking at the cherries are in there. here behind the apple. Shadow under the spoon. I might just wipe these off for now because they're a little distracting. They aren't serving any purpose there. You know, as I lay this back, I'm looking at this little diamond shape next to the spoon before you come to the apple. So I'm just trying, again, I'm always saying puzzle pieces, and that's what I'm trying to do. We'll kind of pretend the cherries are there and paint around them. using the same brush the whole time if you're curious except for when I did some smoothing there you know and I generally don't clean it much unless I'm really if I was switching to like yellow or something I probably would yeah I don't think it hurts to intermix some color It's hard for you to tell what we got going there, but I can tell and I'm okay about it. Let's let's see what highlights we see over there on the saucer. Sorry about that, I'm bumping into you. We're gonna want those to follow the saucer. That might be it. My panel's falling off again. I'm going to break down and put some new tape up here. I promise. Like it's so expensive, right? I, uh, Actually, I threw away like three rolls of tape recently. They had all lost their stickiness. Isn't that the weirdest thing? My, uh, <laughs> she's my granddaughter, step-granddaughter made the comment when I put it on Facebook, I think. She said, I thought that was its only job, she said. Right, to be sticky, I know, it's so funny. I had bought a whole big case of it, you know, when you buy it by bulk. I don't know. Apparently it's possible it can go bad. It did. I 
think we'll block in um, maybe our little cherries. They're very dark at the top. Matter of fact, I want to go darker. Put some blue in that. And this cherry actually is, I gotta move it over, it's over here on the edge of the, is that where I want it? Hmm. Don't know. I usually like things overlapping. very dark at the top and of course they have stems and little tiny highlights we're gonna wait on the stems till I get the apple in we could actually suggest the wand. All right, let's block that apple in. It's a two-toned apple. It is red and green. Wouldn't have to be, but this edge is dark and it comes down right behind the spoon. You'll find if you do round objects and uh, you darken the edge, sometimes it will help it the form turn. You know, otherwise it will feel flat. Like over here. Oh, that is the wrong color. Let's scrape that off. I was trying to go green, but I was trying to go a little darker. It's a weird color, kind of cool green on the apple, which we'll see if we like. We can always go back. I think I hear it raining again, yet again. to kind of head and run some of that over there. I don't know.
told you I took a workshop with a gal one time that she would make stems with a little tiny brush and she would wiggle the top and pull it down in. I don't know, you can try different things and see what you think works. We've got to paint the background yet anyway. All right, we mixed up something dark for the background, and I do see, now I don't know if it will add anything to it, but I do see, uh, this, we'll be lucky this stays up here, <laughs> I do see a shadow of the handle um, back here. And it just kind of fades away. I don't know. And back here is dark. I'm not sure why. All right, we'll mix some white into that mixture. I'm going to keep it on the warmer side though. Like I better hang on to this. See, it's getting crooked on us. Don't fall off. You're almost there. Just made me a nice thumbprint there. I should leave it, right? I've joked about how amazing it would be to see an old master's painting, see their thumbprint in there, right? I was, uh, someone posted a John Singer Sargent painting the other day on Facebook and he posted the models. Um, it was a mother and daughter. He definitely flattered people. I mean, I, you probably know that if you, they were, he made them a lot more attractive than they were. And they probably didn't mind that, did they? I don't know. But, you know, getting a likeness on a portrait is really difficult. And people admire him so much, and I think they admire the way he handled, like, fabric and stuff, satins, and, you know, amazing when you get up close to him. But he didn't nail the likeness, and I, I don't know if he was trying. or if he most of all wanted a beautiful portrait and that didn't matter to him, I don't know. I think it matters though, you know, if someone commissions you to paint their portrait, it, don't you think it should look like them? Let's get rid of that. I'm actually not sure any of that adds anything. We're gonna, I'm gonna take it out. We may have to reestablish some things, you know, once we get the background in. Okay, the fabric goes about Probably take it about there. Now see this may be too close in color. It confuse the eye. What we can do is darken that edge.
And I am not, obviously not trying to cover all my tone. I never am. It will go to about there, I think. And Yeah, we may have to explain some things a little bit better. We'll see. I don't want to be real hard edge with anything, but I want things to feel right, so. So into this stuff going in the, the tablecloth, I'm going to put some yellow and more white. Okay, so we can and we'll see how that feels. Oh, one thing we did not do, and I've gotten a little ahead of myself here, is to put shadows in. So we will. And I don't want to use that brush, so I'm going to try to use this big brush. Use a shadow here for this cherry, and then a shadow for the saucer. We'll come back, and uh, I want—I don't want to mess this up, so I'm going to keep working with this. We'll come back and fix whatever we need to do. Always something to fix. That's painting, isn't it? I was watching somebody paint the other day and they asked him how he knew when he was done and he said when he didn't know what else to do. I've heard it when you've corrected everything that, same thing, when you feel like you've corrected everything you know to correct, you're done. And then I've heard that I never tried much. You might consider it like if you're painting a red item, is to put some of the complement in the shadow. All kinds of opinions, aren't there? so close. I can see some little, like I may want to pull this cherry down a little bit because it's um, kind of lining up with the mug and I don't want that.
So what do we think? What do we think? Like I said, these original shadows that I put in, um, kind of doing away with them. I don't think they, even though I see them up there, I don't think they added anything to the painting. brighter there. Let's put a mat on it real quick before it falls off of there and you can see what it looks like. We are getting new tape before next time. I may have to back you out a little bit. And it's pretty ooey gooey, which I like. There we go. Kind of give you an idea cleaned up. One of the things I like about it, I think I, I like the pot. I like how much of my tone is showing through, my pink and orange. Um, it's nice and painterly. So I'll look at it now, but I think it's not too bad. All right, thank you for joining me. Like and subscribe if you haven't. Um, I would really appreciate it. It was about an hour, so yeah, I kind of like it. Hope you enjoyed it. All right, try something similar maybe on your own. Try a reflective item if you've never done that. All right, thank you again for joining me. Catch me next time. Bye-bye.